studios of the Metro News Radio Network in Morgantown, this is West Virginia's premier sports talk show. From Wirt to Welch, Martinsburg to Matewan, and all points in between, this is the Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line. Tonight's show is brought to you by Northside Automotive, Route 19 in Summersville. We'll beat the advertised price of any other dealer in the state, guaranteed. Now here's your host, Tony Caridi. Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome in Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line coming at you on this 12th day of October. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm in studio tonight with the one and only Senator Brad Howe, who looks as though he just walked off of uh, TPC Sawgrass after uh, 18. Very, uh, very fluorescent look. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Good evening, Senator. <laughs> good, good evening. It's very sunny out, and I don't know how many sunny days we have oh. left. I felt like this was a good sunny day shirt. Hey, man, how beautiful was it today, huh? If you're in West Virginia... How pretty was it outside today? Are these the most best days of the year? Near perfect, my opinion. Yeah, best days of the year. Lots to talk about coming up on the program here this evening. A bunch of football, as you would expect. We'll jump into that here. We'll talk about the Mountaineer game from this past Saturday. We have uh, Dana Holgerson and uh, Arthur Bryles talking today on the Big 12 teleconference. We'll get some thoughts from those gentlemen as they look ahead to Saturday's game in Waco. Huge news in college football today. One head coach fired, one key player out for the rest of this year and a half of a season. It's pretty wild. You probably saw the uh, trickle start last night with Steve Sarkeesian, the uh, head football coach at USC. A leave of absence was the first call from athletic director Pat Hayden after reports began to circulate that Sarkeesian had been uh, abusing alcohol um, in the building, game days, on the sidelines. And today, within the last 90 minutes, the word came out that he has been fired as the head coach at USC. And Sarkeesian has checked himself into a treatment facility. A lot to go there as well. Also, Florida, one of the surprise teams in college football this season, is now going to play the rest of this year and at least – Up to this point next season, without its quarterback, Will Greer. He today was suspended by the NCAA for failing a test in which it was shown that he had taken a banned substance. It wasn't a steroid, but it was a banned substance, something that helps create lean muscle mass. And as a result, Florida has just uh, taken a gut shot because the kid's been playing so well. And as they get ready to play LSU this week, it's going to be the fourth consecutive week, the fourth consecutive week that LSU will play a team's backup quarterback. That's good living. I was just going to say, that's a charmed life for that, LSU. That, that is that is real good living. Also coming up on our show uh, this evening, former WVU head football coach Don Nealon. Uh, He normally comes in here in the final uh, 15 minutes or so. We'll get Coach Nealon's thoughts on Saturday's game between the uh, Mountaineers and the Cowboys of Oklahoma State, and we'll talk about that. So, with all that being said, Senator, let's jump on in. Where shall we go? Now that the dust has settled, steps have been taken back, Breaths have been taken. Everyone has kind of done a yoga breath. They've cleansed themselves. What are your thoughts about Saturday? Well, in a word, disappointing. Disappointing in that that was a game. And let me give my disclaimer here. I know Oklahoma State's 6-0. and If they go on to win this league, I'll come back on this program and apologize. That's did, all you're going to do? You're not going to, like, walk across no, the state? Or no, I'll no. just apologize to him. That, but to me, that did not look like a, a Big 12 championship-type Oklahoma State team. You get that team at home in a year when West Virginia expects to be good and had been playing so well early in the season, that's, that's clearly one you let slip away as the Mountaineers. And again, as we've seen in this league, Tony, you've just got to protect home fields. You've got to win those games. And West Virginia not only comes up on the short end of the stick, did some things again that, that concern you as a, as a Mountaineer fan moving forward for what, what's down the pike. Again, we saw turnovers crop up as a major problem. Again, we saw penalties crop up as a major problem. And again, we saw this offense stall out and not have a productive game, especially when it mattered most 
in the overtime session. So again, to sum it up in one word, just an extremely disappointing effort on Saturday night. What's amazing is the absolute 180 that has taken place here in these last two games in regard to turnovers. You know, all season long, uh, a year ago, West Virginia was plagued by turnovers, and it was talked about uh, tremendously uh, at great length in the off season. And they come out, and they don't just they just don't do well in turnover margin in the first three games of this season. They literally led the nation in turnover margin. I mean, just absolutely huge turnaround. And then all of a sudden, uh, the door got opened up again here in the last two weeks. West Virginia has turned the ball over nine times. Those nine turnovers have resulted in 30 points. And on the other side of it, West Virginia uh, has not been able, right, yeah. to convert off of the turnovers that they have been the recipient of. And as a result, you get yourself into this situation. One of the most startling, shocking stats that hit me when I was looking at the numbers after the game was over Saturday night was the fact that Oklahoma State had two drives the entire night that were longer than 40 yards. Think about that. 33 points for Oklahoma State. They had two drives the entire night over 40 yards and they win a game. Why? Five turnovers. That's how and that's why. And on the other side, Cowboys turned the ball over four times, right? And West Virginia's unable to do anything with them. Literally unable to do anything. Zero points off those turnovers for Oklahoma State, 17 points off turnovers for Oklahoma State. So, again, there's a lot of things to digest in that game. There's a lot of things to look at and ask questions about and say, why did this happen? To me, go right to that point. 17-0 points off turnovers, that's going to be tough to overcome. Another thing is um, this team started extremely well first three games of the year, right? Couldn't have played any better. Mm -hmm. Early on, first game of the season, Georgia Southern, I mean, they came out explosive. Game three of the season against Maryland, just boom, right? Explosive from the beginning. Played well. And now in each of the last two weeks, shaky starts. And you build yourself that hole, you dig yourself the uh, proverbial ditch, and you got to start climbing out of it, and you, you expend so much in energy. It's so hard. It's like basketball. When you're down big and you rally and you come back and you get it close or you tie the game, okay, fine. But that's only... That's only half the process. The next process, now you got to finish it. Last Saturday, West Virginia, right, digs itself the hole, down by 15 points at the break, 17-2. to two. Come out, score, opening possession, third quarter. All is good. And then you get the thing tied, battle, 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 and unable to finish it. A lot of ifs, woods, woods, if this, if that, if that. But what if? Right? What if you just you didn't have to play wonderful to start the game? Just don't turn the ball over. First half. Just play solid. Guess what? That's like three to nothing at halftime. <laughs> right? Right? Yeah, because that's the thing. I mean, you mentioned those stats on, on Oklahoma State. I, mean, I thought the defense for most of that game did what it needed to do to put your team in a position to get a win. I mean, that that's what's alarming about that is is that the offense just again looked so out of sync. That you're that you're worried about moving forward is that fixable? Is it fixable, Tony? I mean, it, the offense just looked horrific at times. No, no consistency, no tempo, no rhythm whatsoever. That's scary. Moving forward, got to get that fixed. It's so fragile, and it and it comes it comes so much with confidence, which this team had at the start of the season. And then when they went to Oklahoma, obviously that confidence was shaken. And when you lose that confidence, it's extremely hard to get back. And I think that a good indicator of that was um, Texas on Saturday, right? People just, they wrote them off, wrote them off for dead. They looked so, I'm talking about they looked so bad mm -hmm. previous yes. to Saturday, right? And then all of a sudden they go, boom, switch comes on. Well, what happened? What happened? Well, I, what I think happened, in my opinion, was 
They took so much grief and so much negative publicity. And a week ago, people were talking about, is it time to fire Charlie Strong, right? And the kids liked the guy so much that they just put forth this incredible effort to save, you know, their coach, so to speak, and they played at an entirely different level. So the long answer to your short question, yeah, I think it can go back to looking rhythmic and looking good, but something big has to happen in order for that to start. Otherwise, until they get it back, then it's a struggle. And, and something big has to happen, and you got to take into account level of competition. I think that's clear now that some of the success West Virginia had early was what we were afraid of. They were playing teams that just didn't have the athletes to match up. Now you've gone against a couple teams, and in particular, just pick two guys. Eric Stryker was unblockable when West Virginia played Oklahoma, completely disruptive. You saw it again. We talked all week about Emmanuel Ogba and how he was going to come in and be a disruptive force. He was yet again. But guess what? You're going to face guys like this in the league. It doesn't get a whole lot easier going on the road with two top three teams. So that's going to be a concern, too. So now you have to start to wonder, is it is it is this West Virginia team going to rise to the occasion and be able to match up talent-wise? Find out. We'll find, we'll find out. out. West Virginia goes in as its largest underdog of the season coming up on Saturday. Oddsmakers have listed this game at 20 and a half, 21 points as they head into Baylor. Lots to talk about. We invite you to stay tuned. Other news of the day as well. Don Nealon still to come in. We'll have Coach with us as well. 618, we'll be back with more. Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line will return. Have you ever wondered just who are the friends of coal? Well, there are 50,000 West Virginia families who support the state's coal industry, and they look a lot like you. Honest, hardworking, good neighbors who want a future for themselves and their state. They're coal miners, housewives, school teachers, mechanics, doctors, college professors, pizza delivery guys, your friends. The Friends of Coal know and understand the importance of the coal industry to our state's economy. They know about the 60,000 jobs the coal industry creates in our state. They know about the $25 billion the industry pumps into our economy. And they know that without coal, our state would face an economic catastrophe. Come to think of it, that sounds like most West Virginians. Let Congress know you are a proud West Virginian and you are a friend of coal. Coal is West Virginia. Come on, man. We're going to be late. We need to leave. Yeah, we need to hurry. Let's go. Please slow down. You are entering a work zone. Oh, man, they're working on the road. We're not going to make it. You are approaching a work zone. Please slow down. What is that? It's just the GPS. Don't pay attention down, to it. Slow down, slow down, slow down. When you speed in a work zone, you are endangering your life and the lives of others. Slow down. It's the law. Be a smart driver. Don't speed in work zones. The safety message from the West Virginia Department of Transportation Division of Highways. Saving one life at a time. Hi, it's Tony Caridi with a question. What can a video do for you? Well, if you're in business or part of an organization, let me tell you what videos have done for our clients at Pikewood Creative. Our commercials have generated millions of dollars in new business. Our long form videos have helped capital campaigns raise tens of millions of dollars. That's what a video can do for you. If you have a need, then visit us at pikewoodcreative.com. That's Pikewood Creative. The Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line returns in two minutes, two minutes on Metro News. For 30 years, the voice of West Virginia. To navigate any map, you need a legend like Jeep Cherokee, 2015 Four Wheeler of the Year. Jeep Grand Cherokee, the most awarded SUV ever. And introducing Jeep Renegade, the newest addition to the most awarded SUV lineup ever. Now get an additional $500 bonus cash. Hurry into the Jeep Celebration event. Get 0% financing for 72 months or $3,500 total cash allowance on Jeep Cherokee Limited. Almost there. Just five more minutes. Almost home. Statistics show that 80% of auto fatalities occur close to home on rural roads. That's why law enforcement is stepping up rural patrols and cracking down on impaired driving. If you are over the limit, you are under arrest because drinking and driving don't mix. Remember, over the limit, under arrest. This message brought to you by the Governor's Highway Safety Program.
Welcome back, everybody. Northside Automotive Statewide Sportsline, Monday night edition of the show. Don Nealon joins us in the studio. A little bit later on in the program, we'll get his take on the uh, weekend in college football. Uh, real quick here before we talk more about the Mountaineers, baseball this afternoon. One game's already a final, and that is Kansas City rallying, beating the Astros 9-6. to Houston had led 6-2. to Kansas City ended the game by scoring seven unanswered runs. Locks the series up at two games apiece, and now that American League Divisional Series will move to Kansas City for a fifth and decisive game. Another fifth game is on the horizon. Toronto right now is leading Texas 8-1 to one with one away in the top half of the seventh, and the series owned by Texas right now two games to one. Today's win by the Jays would lock it up at two and force a fifth and deciding game. Just getting underway, end of one, St. Louis and Chicago. Coming up tonight, Dodgers against the Mets. Quite a day for baseball. And, of course, coming up tonight, Monday Night Football, the Steelers out west taking on the San Diego Chargers. Absolutely. More on the Mountaineers coming up in just a second. We'll get into Steve Sarkeesian and the ripple effect that that is going to cause first. We remind you that our number to call is 800-765-8255, 800-765-TALK. We'll go to the phone lines one second. WV today receiving a verbal commitment for the upcoming recruiting class, a long snapper from California, Damon Johnson. Is a verbal. He becomes the 20th overall commitment for West Virginia in this class and the second specialist taken in this class. So add Damon Johnson out of California as a long snapper onto the WV list. How about that? Scully for a long snapper, huh? It's an important position, Tony. It's a very important position, but you know and you years don't, gone. You don't think about when it's going well. You will absolutely. recognize that position no, if it gets bungled. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. But in years gone by, the thought, right, the thought of putting a scholarship mm-hmm. on a long snapper, like when, when Donnie Nealon was here, Yeah. no. He eventually did, I think. We had a situation. I'm not going to mention the kid's name, but when we had a young boy that uh, couldn't do it, and I think they did. If I'm not mistaken, they went out and got themselves one. Had to. Had to. Phone lines. Bob Charleston. Good evening to you, thir- sir. Go right ahead. I know it's uh, a waste of time to talk about officiating, but uh, I know they missed a couple of pass interference calls they could have given us. And maybe you guys have already seen the picture, but I'm looking at the Sunday morning Charleston Gazette, and it shows the picture of uh, Ogba stripping the ball from uh, Shell. Mm-hmm. And to the left of Shell, there's an Oklahoma State guy got his hand in the face of Marquise Lucas and got his head uh, pushed back at about a 45-degree angle. And, of course, that wasn't called. And if it was, that might that one play might have changed that game. Thanks. All right. Thanks for the call, Bob. Well, I tell you this, they could certainly do without a fumble, right? They could certainly do without a fumble. Reality is, obviously, a lot of that happens. Uh, play in and play out. Actually being called more this year than I've seen in the past, the illegal hands to the face. I've seen that a lot more. But, yeah, I mean, West Virginia does it. Opposing teams do it. Uh, you hope that it does get called. Um, but in that particular case, obviously, uh, that was a huge, huge turnover at that point. Just huge. Those are just, they, they suck the wind out of you, man. Right? Yeah. They just take five, everything out of you. Five total fumbles the other night, Tony. Three of them lost, but five total fumbles on the day. Can't do it. Can't do it. David is in Bridgeport. Good evening. Good evening, guys. Hey, I, I want to say this, that that 20-point spot um, to us from Baylor that really shows us a lot of respect. I know it sounds crazy to say, but the fact of the matter is no one's really beaten us. We've beaten ourselves. And you have Coach Nealon coming on there. I can already hear him, holy criminy, you can't beat Toledo with nine turnovers in two weeks. But the turnovers are like at crucial times. No such good thing as a turnover any time. But they're like you're going in to score. Two of them, the turnover itself leads to a touchdown. What's amazing that Carl Joseph's not even a part of the, the storyline. The defense has played well enough to win both games. So my, my point is, 
it's, it's still very, very salvageable. Even the next two games you play clean, you'll be in those football games. And it's so disappointing to fans because you literally just beat yourself. And, um, you know, I, I just think there's a lot still to play for. I mean, I know it's the half cup, half full um, aspect of it, but I truly believe that's the case. Oh, can I say one other thing? Yes, sir. Man, this um, running back rotation, throw it out the window. I mean, whatever happened to, um, like, Jackie Marcellus and the guy you recruited, Marcellus Chael? No, I'm joking. But – I mean, and Dante Thomas Williams. I mean, that guy, he must have really done something bad. He doesn't even get a sniff at the ball. Yeah, along that line, I think that there's probably going to be, I would imagine that that will be asked about uh, and talked about tomorrow during the press conference. Um, Dana's press conference is tomorrow at uh, noon. And, you know, why aren't other players getting in there? You mentioned Jackie Marcellus. You mentioned Dante Thomas Williams. So the, the the short and the simple answer that you're you, that you get from coaches when when those questions are asked is kind of this: if they were better than the players that were on the field, they would be on the field. That's what you get. I mean, why isn't so and so playing? Well, so and so isn't playing because we think that we have a better chance of being successful with that player. Now, obviously, you know you kind of throw your hands up, but that's the reality of it. And the reality of it is that. Because we're not at practice, because we don't see uh, their activity in practice, we don't see their behavior in team meetings, we don't see their understanding and comprehension of what it is that's being practiced, then you got to kind of take yourself out of that equation. And I'm sure if that was kind of presented, well, here's why. Because this, 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 and you go, okay, but that's kind of the reason why. Now that said... And that, and that makes sense for the Dante Thomas Williams and the Jackie Marcells question. I think what's raised some questions since the game ended the other night is, is a couple things. One, Russell Shell. it was a little bit surprising that given the night that he and Smallwood were both having, Smallwood went for 19 carries, 147 yards, Shell 19 carries, 48 yards, that Shell was the exclusive back in the backfield during the overtime session. So that raised some questions as to where was Wendell Smallwood, who was having such a great night. Dana's answer in the post game was a little bit curious in that he said there's a rotation between the backs. Whoever's ready to go goes. Smallwood was in. It was Shell's turn. Shell was in. Okay, so you could ask about that. That seemed curious, but there's your explanation. But what was more curious, Tony, is afterwards Wendell Smallwood was asked about that, and he said that Shell and Smallwood decide between themselves who gets in the game. It's a player's decision on who is in. Smallwood said Shell wanted the carries in overtime. He trusts him, so he put Shell in. I think that's a question a lot of Mountaineer fans have that I think you're right will be addressed tomorrow at the press conference. I have to say I don't know that I've heard that, of players inserting themselves and being in charge of their own substitutions, especially at such a critical juncture in overtime when you know you have to score a touchdown. That may be one thing if that occurs in the first quarter, but in overtime – you know you need to score a touchdown. You have one back that is clearly performing and having much more success than the other for whatever reason. And the players were deciding among themselves who got put in the game. I think that's a question a lot of fans have right now. No, I don't disagree with you. And, again, I think it will be addressed uh, coming up uh, tomorrow during the uh, press get-together uh, with Dana. And, of uh, obviously, the kids will be uh, open to the mics as well and assistant coaches will be open. I think there will be more clarification to exactly – um, how that works. 631 Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line. We do invite you to stay tuned. Our lines are jamming, and we'll get to more of your phone calls when we return. Still to come, Don Nealon. Stay with us, Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line. As a cyclist, we make choices. We choose which motorcycle manufacturer to buy from. We choose what type of motorcycle we ride. We even choose where and when to ride. We also choose to ride straight, alcohol and drug free. Alcohol is involved in 50% of motorcycle fatalities in West Virginia. That's one in two drivers who die each year. Don't become a statistic. Ride straight, alcohol and drug free. Presented by the West Virginia Department of Transportation, Governor's Highway Safety and Motorcycle Safety and Awareness Program. To navigate any map, you need a legend like the capable Jeep Cherokee, four-wheeler magazine's 2015 four-wheeler of the year, and Jeep Grand Cherokee, the most awarded SUV ever with best-in-class 30 MPG highway and 730-mile driving range. 
so you can push even farther into uncharted and unmapped territory. Get a great deal on the most awarded and legendary SUV lineup ever at the Jeep Celebration event. Right now, purchase and get 0% financing for 72 months or 3,500 total cash allowance on the 2015 Jeep Cherokee Limited. The Jeep SUV lineup has received more awards in its lifetime than any other competitive SUV lineup. EPA estimated 4x2 with available Eco Diesel V6 and 24.6 gallon fuel tank. 0% APR financing for 72 months equals $1,389 per month per $1,000 finance for well qualified buyers regardless of down payment when financed through Chrysler Capital. Residency restrictions apply. Take retail delivery by 11 2. Jeep is a registered trade mark of FCA US LLC. This Saturday, the West Virginia Mountaineers travel to Texas for a Big 12 matchup against the Baylor Bears. Join the Metro News game day crew starting at 9 a.m. for the Jeep Golden Blue Countdown, followed by the Sports Brunch. Game line kicks off at high noon, then post-game analysis begins at 3 on the Golden Blue Wrap-Up. Presented by the West Virginia Oil and Natural Gas Association. Followed by the point after at 5. Don't miss Mountaineer game day coverage at its best on Metro News, the voice of West Virginia. The Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line returns in two minutes, two minutes on Metro News. For 30 years, the voice of West Virginia. To navigate any map, you need a legend like Jeep Cherokee, 2015 four-wheeler of the year. Jeep Grand Cherokee, the most awarded SUV ever. And introducing Jeep Renegade the newest addition to the most awarded SUV lineup ever. Now get an additional $500 bonus cash. Hurry into the Jeep Celebration event. Get 0% financing for 72 months or 3,500 total cash allowance on Jeep Cherokee Limited. Almost there. Just five more minutes. Almost home. Statistics show that 80% of auto fatalities occur close to home on rural roads. Cops. That's why law enforcement is stepping up rural patrols and cracking down on impaired driving. If you are over the limit, you are under arrest because drinking and driving don't mix. Remember, over the limit, under arrest. This message brought to you by the Governor's Highway Safety Program. back everybody north side automotive statewide sports line wvu women's soccer team went up a notch today in the uh, national rankings they're now number two in the country they had been three the last two weeks that's the highest they've ever been ranked let's go to cheat lake and bill bill you've been holding go ahead sir that's okay you know tony i have one to say about what they need they need motivation and if you would ask the hundred people what's motivation mean you get all kind of answers i've talked to psychology departments before and even those students. And to me, it's inspiration to action. Okay, how does that work? Well, as long, you know, so I give them a key word. What's, what's a takeoff word for success? And they give me a lot of answers. To me, it's dissatisfaction. As long as you're satisfied with what you're doing, your play or whatever, you're never going to do anything about it, Tony. And when you, only when you begin to be dissatisfied and see that, will you do anything about it? Now, how he intends to motivate these people, I don't know. I've coached kids and motivate them, but it's not the same. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's an interesting thought. I, I personally don't – I see a team that plays very hard, to be quite honest with you. I, I see a team that doesn't necessarily play smart, 
on the offensive end at times, but I don't see a lack of effort. Do you see a lack of effort? No. I, see, I don't I, see I wouldn't that. have necessarily no, said lack of effort. I, I think what concerns you, though, is you've heard now two straight weeks coaches mention the slow start and the guys have come out flat or slow or not ready to go. I think that's concerning in that why is it slow starting? But, I, but I'm with you. I, I don't know that lack of effort would have jumped out with me, but I do think admittedly from the coaches, they're saying it, that the guys were starting slow and asking the question why. I think that's a concern. It would be a concern, you know, and I, I think, you know, if, if you ask those guys if they're satisfied, you know, if they're satisfied, I'd get some more players in there because they're not playing up to their expectation and what they can do. Yeah. I would say this. Uh, what's the common factor in the last two games offensively? In each of the last two games offensively, at the start of the game, the opposing team's defensive line basically just overpowered you. I agree. Happened against Oklahoma. What mm -hmm. did that cause? Turnovers, mm -hmm. right? Last Saturday, right? Agba, strip, fumble, recovery, touchdown. Big 12 player of the week defensively. Until they settled themselves, right? If you remember, I mean, Agba was not as big of a factor for the remainder of the game once they kind of figured something out there. But it was the inability to handle them early is what caused the interruption. Yeah, and, and as I said earlier in the show, though, you're going to get guys. I mean, you, you watch Texas defensive line, you, you wonder why they sure. handled Oklahoma, because sure. they manhandled that offensive line. So I think the, th the thing you look at as you watch that, Tony, you're concerned that that happened in back-to-back -back weeks, and I know those are great players, but there's going to be other very good players in this league, Texas being a group that you just watched on Saturday – take down an Oklahoma team that when we left Norman, when everybody left Norman, you said, oh, the Oklahoma team's pretty good. They got some flaws, but they're pretty good. They just walked in and got waxed by Texas, who was a complete mess, and a lot of that started up front. They got to Baker Mayfield and secured him. So that's my concern about this team going forward is you're going to get other guys. Do you have it figured out? Do you have the ability not only to figure it out, do you have the ability to hold that pass rush off? Mm -hmm. This is another – I threw that number out earlier that – Oklahoma State had two drives longer than 40 yards the entire night. Mm -hmm. West Virginia had five drives longer than 40 yards the entire night. And of those five, one, two, three, four of them came in the second half. So here's the drive, here's the yardage gain in the, in the first half. Six yards on the first drive. Negative two the next drive. Negative eight the next drive. 16 the next drive. Five. And then 69, 12-play, 69-yard drive that ended with a fumble. That was the huge fumble <laughs> they were going in yeah. at that point. You know, one of the other interesting notes, and Rashid made a, made a good point, Rashid Marshall on our game day coverage, he talked about the offense. Some of the reason the offense was so disjointed in the first quarter is because you started three drives inside your own 10-yard line. And that throws off the whole offensive game plan when you're Absolutely. trying to work with your back against the end zone. So that's an issue, too. Add, Two games all the row. issues add field position on. Yeah, and uh, yeah, absolutely right. And that is also linked that back to the inability to get any kind of a punt return. Mm -hmm. So when your defense is getting a stop, punt return has been non-existent. Mm -hmm. uh, the Mountaineers are averaging under six yards per punt return on the season. They've got 11 punt returns. And again, you're absolutely right. Starting inside, the average start in the first half was the 15. Right? And 15 was good. Literally and the first three were inside Oklahoma the 10. Oklahoma State's was 35. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Massive difference. Massive difference to when you start to turn, when you start going down there. Because, as Don Nealon will say, when you come in here, when he comes in in just a little bit, the, the old rule used to be, at some point an offense will screw up in a drive. Just wait. Don't let them score. Just wait. They'll do something. Tackle for a loss, which is going to force them into a, force them into a punt. Just Just wait. And, it, and, and your probability, right, of screwing up on an offensive possession increases when you have to drive farther. Yeah, that's right. Your concern just with this stuff is, Tony, it goes from being bad luck and a one-off to what patterns are developing. Mm -hmm. Slow start, bad field position, turnover, lack of a punt return. That's now two games where those so, same things have happened. When it starts to become a pattern, not bad luck, that's when you've got some trouble. Ed in Charleston, it's your turn, sir. How you doing, Tony? Good, thank you. Good. I appreciate it. I've been listening to the callers. I'd like to make a comment on defense and two on offense, if you allow me to do mm -hmm. that. Go ahead. Okay. One thing I wanted to say that the, was it Gerard Harper that took Carl Joseph's place? Yes, sir. Jared I Harper. Think he did a, I, I think he did a fantastic job based on the circumstances, don't you? I do. 
I do. There was no point. There was no point in that game where you said, "Oh my gosh, what have we gotten ourselves into?" He uh, he finished up with six tackles. Five of those were solo, and he broke up two passes, and he had a quarterback hurry. That's a good night. And that's uh, that's uh, putting a person in a position that, uh, based on the attitude that uh, Carl Joseph had, I guess it just transferred into him, and it was like he didn't miss a beat. Yeah, and I really like that. And on offense. I heard one of the callers say that it uh, was not a lack of effort. I would agree with that, but I think it's the lack of skill set at a, at certain positions. I mean, you can have all the effort you want, but if you don't have the skill set to perform, then that becomes a problem. Not a criticism. I'm just saying that becomes a problem. I know that uh, when you talk about uh, Tyrone Swoops, you know, it, he had a problem at Texas. Coach Strong put in uh, what was Jerry, Gerard, Gerard Hurd, Hurd. Yep. And, and look at the difference. And my question is, is there not anybody at the quarterback position that he could at least give an opportunity to? Even if a person pra- – there are some bad practice <laughs> football players. But once they get on the game, the mindset just totally changed. Is there not someone there that he could, you know, at least give them a shot? In their opinion, No. At this point. Now, will that change in two weeks or three weeks? Potentially. But uh, trust me when I tell you this. If there was another solution that they thought would help this team move the ball and increase the chance to win, they press that button. They do that. So the answer, um, you know, is to be no, not at this point. But but to me, that, that indicates a problem then. <laughs> That indicates what to me would be a problem. I would think that maybe you at least try someone else, whoever you got, you know, whether it was Trest or whoever the other backups are, at least try it for a quarter. We can't afford these next two games. <laughs> we can't afford these next two games to go in there making those type of mistakes and expect to win. It's not going to happen. West Virginia, to me, has a great football team. They have a good football team. But that key position makes a difference. One, they're not scoring enough points the others are keeping the defense on the field too long and it leads to you know making mistakes once they're on the field that long and those are my comments and i appreciate it thank you ed we appreciate uh, we appreciate your call yeah that's what it comes down to i mean you know real simple uh if they thought they had better options, they would do it. Yeah, there, there's no question. But but to his point, I do, I do think that's another area of concern, Tony. And it goes back to what Dana said in the post game, And this was really alarming to me because we've heard Dana preach about this since he got here. When you talk about balance, when do you throw, when do you run? He says it's pretty simple. The defense will tell you what to do. If it gives you a look with too many guys in the box, we throw it. If they back those guys out of the box and cover pass, we run it. That's why you see them run so often, right? It's one of the things he's talked about. It was alarming that in the post game he mentioned this and talked about the question, the call on third down, why they ran it. He mentioned there were nine guys in the box. They only had eight to block. So it was a look that was saying, according to what he normally says the offense does, it's a look saying we've got to throw the ball here. He says we tried the, the throw on the previous play. It didn't work. We decided to try and run it right there. That, to me, is a concern. What he's basically saying is he didn't have any confidence in the passing game at that point and had to go against the major tenet of that offense is take what the defense gives you. He did not do that in the most crucial time in overtime of a game you needed to win. That's a concern moving forward about where the passing game is. 646, Don Nealon on his way in. He'll join us when we return. Stay with us. The Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line back after this. This is Ken Tyree, your West Virginia State Fire Marshal. If you have a fire tonight, will you get out safely? You'll have a better chance of getting out safely if you've planned ahead. Develop a fire escape plan and practice it with your whole family. Everyone should know two ways out of each room and know where to meet outside. Make sure everyone understands that getting out is the first priority. Practice your home fire drill at night and during the day with everyone in your home. And remember, once you're outside, stay out. A message from the West Virginia State Fire Marshal. The field of corrections is fast growing and full of opportunities for advancement. Right now, the West Virginia Division of Corrections has openings for male and female correctional officers throughout the state. If you have a high school diploma or GED and can pass a drug test, Visit WVDOC.com to see job listings and apply. These are state jobs with great benefits and an accelerated hiring process to get you on your way 
Quickly, visit WVDOC.com today. An equal opportunity employer. Every year in October, the New River Gorge Bridge closes to traffic for one day and opens for Bridge Day. On October 17th, base jumpers, repellers, and spectators will gather to share the excitement and spectacle. Stop by GoMart, fill up your tank, and check out 180 craft and food vendors brought to you by Fayette County Bank. The Whiskey 7 and All Veterans Parachute Team jumps and fun at Adventures on the Gorge. Call 304-465-5617 to sign up for shuttle service for Bridge Day, October 17th. The Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line returns in two minutes, two minutes on Metro News. For 30 years, the voice of West Virginia. To navigate any map, you need a legend like Jeep Cherokee, 2015 four-wheeler of the year. Jeep Grand Cherokee, the most awarded SUV ever. And introducing Jeep Renegade, the newest addition to the most awarded SUV lineup ever. Now get an additional $500 bonus cash. Hurry into the Jeep Celebration event. Get 0% financing for 72 months or $3,500 total cash allowance on Jeep Cherokee Limited. Almost there. Just five more minutes. Almost home. Statistics show that 80% of auto fatalities occur close to home on rural roads. Cops. That's why law enforcement is stepping up rural patrols and cracking down on impaired driving. If you are over the limit, you are under arrest because drinking and driving don't mix. Remember, over the limit, under arrest. This message brought to you by the Governor's Highway Safety Program. Welcome back, everybody. It is the Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line. Tony Caridi along with the uh, Senator Brad Howe. Coach Nealon's in the studio with us as well. We'll get to coach in just a second. But a reminder, a lot of stuff going on in the great state of West Virginia here in the month of October. You can raise a pint during Bramwell's Oktoberfest. Experience Friday nights at Glade Springs Resort or sign up for Ace's Zombie Run. When's all that happened, Tony? Well, I'll tell you, the Friday night run... Take place. Uh, they take place October 9th through October the 31st. Those are the Friday night runs. The zombie run takes place October the 31st. You can register online. Where do you do this? Well, simply go to WV on Facebook. Just go to WV on Facebook. Check it out. And uh, you're encouraged as well when you're out there. Check things out at go to WV.com. Joining us in the studio right now, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, head football coach, Emeritus of the Mountaineers, <laughs> Hall of Famer, Don Nealon. Good evening to you, sir. What do you say, Tony? What's uh, up? I'm well, buddy. How are you doing? Haven't lost any games. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? You haven't lost any games, and the last game you ever coached you won. So, buddy, That's right. you're gold. That's right. <laughs> right? You, I'm going to be better than that, right? The last one you ever coached you won, so you said, guess what? See ya. Yeah. I'm out of here. <laughs> All right, buddy. You watched on Saturday. Give us uh, your take. What uh, what's going on out there? Well, you know, Tony, I'm I'm just a guy watching the game, but uh, uh, you know, I don't think that Oklahoma State is a real good football team. I really don't. I uh, they're the luckiest team maybe in America, but I don't think they're the best football team. And it just seems like uh, you know we're our own worst enemy, Tony. I mean, uh, we shot our foot ourselves in the foot against Oklahoma. And we certainly shot ourselves in the foot against Oklahoma State. 
And until we correct those things, then, then we're in trouble, just that simple. But when we got into overtime, I would have bet my bottom dollar we'd have won that game because the momentum had come to us. We're at home. We had everything going for us. And, uh, and uh, lo and behold, they ran the football. And they hadn't run, hadn't run it, it all night. Yeah, they hadn't been able to run it all night, and they ran the football during the t- yeah. during the uh, day gone overtime period. But uh, you know, we got to forget it and get on because uh, I'm anxious to see. You see, I'm of course I'm old school, but I don't know how in the world Baylor can be the second best team in America when they let everybody score 35 or 40 points. In fact, I'd be willing to bet if we score 40 points, we'll beat them. I don't think they can score f- over 40 points against us. Oh. I really don't think they can. Okay, so now let's, coach, let's stop av- right there. Let's stop av- right there. They're averaging 66. But if you, remember, if you remember when Coach Nealon came in last year after the Baylor game, you were surprised, stunned, in fact, that Baylor didn't try something else offensively. They kept doing the same thing, play Terrible. after play, and West Virginia stopped them. So what happens this game? You think they go back, they're just going to do what they do? Or you think they've made some adjustments at this point? I know well, it's tough to guess. Know, I, but I haven't studied them. But last year against us, their passing attack was X or Z straight down the field and heave it to them. Yeah. And we got good corners. And they never tried anything different. And they never, and, I mean, give me a break. Uh, no crossing patterns. No. I mean, I don't know what. And I'm saying this is a great football team. So I, I don't know. I, when I see their replays, that's what I see. Yeah, guys running straight down the field. Somebody throwing it up in the air, and a guy catching it. And uh, but uh, I'm anxious to see if uh, if they let us get 40 points, we'll beat their butt. Bold prediction. Amen. I Bold like prediction. It. I like it, Coach. I like it. Um, coming into this game, they're officially averaging 64. They're allowing 22. Yeah, so but they've far. played four tasty creams. Yes, they have. Yes, they have. <laughs> yes, they have. And there are two games. And there are two. Well, uh, Texas Tech got thirty-five on them. They beat Texas Tech sixty-three thirty-five, and that was at Baylor. Yeah, and Texas Tech can't play defense worth a crap. But yeah. if you remember, they came in last year leading the country in rushing. I mean, all the highlights are their long passes, but their running attack is really their deal. West Virginia shut that down. West Virginia has been playing well against the run. So you got to think, again, make them one-dimensional and see if the guys on the outside can match up. No it's that question. simple, right? Right, no <laughs> question about it. I, uh, You know, the reason they were leading the country in, in rushing is because the defense just scattered to cover the guys and, and the numbers matched up, and boom. Mm-hmm. Uh, even I can run. But uh, I, I just don't see them doing that against us. Coach, when it, they literally put their wideouts outs on the end line, on the sidelines, right? That's how far they spread you. So last year, West Virginia had success by coming after the quarterback and really giving them a pounding. I would imagine that would be your plan. You've got that's your only alternative, right? Because if you let him, if you you can't drop eight against this team, can you? Uh, Tony, every time we drop eight, it's a disaster. It's a disaster. First of all, I don't think they're very smart. The closer you line your wide receiver up to the sideline. That sideline's another player. I just play my defensive back three yards inside of him. Never let him run inside. <laughs> I mean, heavens to Betsy. They ought to move that guy in so that he's got a two-way go. They're hurting their wide receivers by lining them up that far out. I'd love that. Uh, if I was a defensive back, I'd start to grin. That's like having another buddy playing outside of me. That, that little stripe out there, that, that thing, that's an out-of-bounds, brother. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but I, I just don't see this team being that good now. they got some imposing-looking guys. I mean, that they're 400-pound. Uh, yeah, Laquan, uh, and, McGowan. Laquan McGowan. And, and they, I saw a clip. They ran a clever play. They put him in at fullback, and it was a short yardage yep. situation. And, and they ran – Neyland's old isolation play. <laughs> well, that big turkey slipped the linebacker, yep. and they threw the ball to him. Beautiful. We did that a couple of times with my, my big boy, Wes Alvers. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. We used to tell him, fat boy, if you drop this ball, we're going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Isn't uh, that what he took down the sideline in the yeah. Music City? That was, yeah. a, no, that, that, was yeah. a, that was a wheel route. That was yeah. a wheel route? Yeah, that, 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 but <laughs> unbelievable. Wes was so much fun to coach. He loved it. You know, his son's a pretty good player. Oh, is he really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, hearing good things about his son. Good yeah. player. Well, I wouldn't doubt it because Wes, Wes had a great, great, 
great attitude. Yeah, he did. I mean, we played him a guard for a while, a fullback. Uh, he'd do anything. Just, hey, coach, just stick me on the – put me in the game. Yep, absolutely. He, yeah, super kid. Coach, uh, emotionally here, how do you what – would, what would your words be to this Mountaineer team after a couple of tough losses like this? Well, you know, first of all, yeah, I'd tell them, hey, we played two real good football teams, even if I'm not real sure I believe that. But, hey, uh, everybody tells me they're real good. And uh, we've played nose to nose with both of them, but we, we just got to eliminate our own mistakes. And, uh, uh, you know, you have to be careful. You know, you know, we fumble at the wrong time and things like that, but the more you harp on that, it seems like that more it happens. And yeah. so you just go back and, hey, you secure both ends of the football and don't worry about it. But, uh, you know, like somebody says, well, why don't you make them take it and <laughs> take it to their room and sleep with it? Well, if you think that's going to help them, I guarantee you that's not going to help them worth a nickel. All that's going to make them do is it's going to put in their mind, I'm a fumbler. Yep. <laughs> Forget it. That's what you do. But, uh, you know, we just got to eliminate our mistakes and help Skyler a little bit. Don't try to put the game in his hands. Yeah, give him comfortable stuff that he exactly. can snap off. Exactly, a little yeah. dink here, a little dink there. And that Smallwood's a great back. Give him the ball. And the music's on. And Coach Nealon's just warmed up. He'll be coming up with Bob Pruitt, Dave Weekly, starting at 7.06 on many of these same stations. It's the Don Nealon, Bob Pruitt Show on the Metro News Radio Network. Thanks so much for being with us. We invite you to stay tuned. We'll be back again tomorrow night, 6.06. Dana Holgerson's press conference tomorrow at noon. Complete coverage, wvmetronews.com. Have yourself a good night. We will see you. The Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line has been an exclusive presentation of the Metro News Radio Network. Copyright 2015. All rights reserved.